There is Cam Newton. Oh, they got a they have a blue carpet there in uh, in Carolina. How about that? Well, they're really stepping their game up for week one. There he is. There's no hitch in that giddy up, right? No, he's fine. He's got the shorts good. on. It's 90 degrees. All right, news Jared got Kurt, what is this? Can you help me out with this? We no, see, I we've been seeing it for several years. I don't know. I don't know. Is it a drum beat? Is that what they're list he's listening to? We're right loosening up my rotator cuff. $10 people. million. Dollars. He saw Matt Ryan do it. By the way, jacket. I would love for you to warm up this way on the NFL game day morning set. Let's do okay. it. Okay. He gets it in. <laughs> Just <laughs> careful. Don't pull something. All right, there's Antonio Brown. Uh -oh. Look at this. All oh, great moments of the Raiders. Yucking it up. Having a good time. Having a good time. Well, he's in, he's in New England now. Here, take a look at this, what he tweeted out, uh, yeah, Instagram well, out. Uh -oh. hey, uh, we, we, need, we need to spell check Foxborough, but other than that, I really like it. Oh, boy. Let's, let's, can we help out? Hey, A.B., there's no S in Foxborough. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Uh, MJ Acosta and Mike. No, again, I'm just, I'm just giving my, I'm giving my, I'm giving my best look, Rich just in case I show up on YouTube. You're zinging him. Hold on a minute. <laughs> MJ Acosta, you take it away. Well, guys, one of the themes we've heard repeatedly here at the Raiders facility is just how equipped this team is to play without Antonio Brown, given how much time he missed throughout the summer. It, with all the players that I spoke with, uh, they said that, yes, the manner in which things turned so drastically was disappointing, but not necessarily shocking. Now, the offensive mentality here, according to head coach John Gruden, has always been to spread the ball around. And according to the guys I spoke with, I really garnered that sense of confidence that they have in what they've built throughout camp and in the preseason. And now, one player shared an interesting perspective with me. He said, well, everyone on the outside has been distracted by AB. Internally, it's been all work mode. This guy told me that he prefers it that way. He says, quote, it's better if they don't see us coming. Mike? MJ, very interesting approach from the Patriots here. Very quiet on the player front about the acquisition of Antonio Brown. Yes, Julian Edelman is already selling T-shirts heralding his uh, approach to Foxborough, but otherwise pretty quiet on social media and certainly when reaching out to players, they don't want to talk about it. They're focused on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll find out more after the game tonight. There's a culture of accountability here in Foxborough. Bill Belichick has once said, if I favor one, then I'm not favoring the other 52, and that is filtered down right into the locker room. Great leadership in that room. Tom Brady, the McCourty twins, Matthew Slater. They won't let this thing get sideways, and if it does, they'll go to Belichick, they'll tell him, and Antonio Brown will not last if he won't toe the line. Rich? So I guess that, 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 that begs the question, you know, uh, as you could see, is he the latest guy who is Pro Bowl uh, ability and some with Pro Bowls on their resume to fall out of favor in one spot and then show up and ball out in New England? Just take, you know, straw into gold, right? Uh, hour three here on NFL Game Day Morning, week number one of NFL 100 season. We're already one game in. We're taking up the kickoffs of the 1 o'clock Eastern games. Rich Eyes and Steve Mariucci, Kurt Warner, and Michael Irvin at the end of the set. In case you're just joining us, this is the third time we're talking about Antonio Brown on this program. But uh, <laughs> top of hour number three, the way we're spinning this one, is it worth the risk for New England? Yes, it is, Rich. You know, he's a great player. We all know that. And I do believe that everybody, you know, needs a second chance sometimes, and you give it to him, maybe a third chance. Um, it's just how we do things. Um, this is a one-year deal. Actually, it's a five-month deal. That's all it is, five months. Behave for five months, really. And, and so you're going to be great. Now, Bill is going to do the same thing. Here's the greatest coach maybe of all time, and I think that for five months he'll fall in line because he should and he has to because if it, if it, does, if it goes sideways, it's going to end, uh, you know, in a bad way. So um, I, I think if it, doesn't, if it doesn't go well, three strikes and you're out, a lot of teams are lining up to sign him now. But if Bill gets rid of him, I don't think a lot of teams will be yeah. lining up to sign him. I believe it's worth the risk as well. And I think part of it is because of what you've just shown, Rich, is that they've been here before. They've been in this situation before where people say, I can't work. It's not going to work. You can't bring so-and-so here and, and, and make him fit in. It's worked for them numerous times. And so if I'm Bill Belichick and I say, okay, this is worth the risk uh, to try this. And, and you, you got – you, you have the time because it's a one-year deal. But, but you also have a good number at the money. 
You know, I know everybody's talking one year, 15 million. No, it's one year, 10 million dollars. The top guy in the league got 22 million dollars a year. And AB is in that class, really, to be honest with you, and, and, and really worth the $20 million a year. You get them for $10 million. You get that talent in that wide receiver room for $10 million. And, and trust me, guys, this, this man's different. Coach, I know, you know I love Tomlin and, 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 and we love Gruden, but this man is different. This is the dude. He will respect Bill Belichick. There's no doubt about it. There is no way getting around it. You will give Bill Belichick the respect that he deserves because everything he touches turns to gold. That, that, why, why, didn't, why didn't Gruden get that respect? I, you yeah. know, that, that, that's, that you have to ask AB about, Mike, but I guarantee you he will respect this That's true. That's a shame because I, I don't care you if it's your high school coach or your yes. college coach no or Coach. rookie coach you should respect your coach right or no your doubt. parents or authority whatever that is no I don't I don't think you're selective as to who you respect I, I agree but is there something to the fact of knowing going in what the right. expectation is is that you know what it really seemed like a B is in whether it was Pittsburgh or you go and you push and you see how much you can get away with. I mean, our kids do that all the time, right? right. Hey, let's see how right. much I can get away with mom, how much I can get away with, with dad. <laughs> when they know what the parameters are right. from the get-go, does that change things? And I think everybody's talking about it. It's going to be different in New England. Why? In because everybody service. understands what the parameters are going in. And so – Begs the question, is it going to be right. different for A.B.? Because he You're not the boss like you were in Pittsburgh. You're not the savior like you thought you needed to be in Oakland. You're just an added piece in this dynasty. And they've already won Super Bowls without you. Do not come mess it up. Be a part of it and get you a ring. Last question that plays into this. Do you think the last week was Brown not being able to control himself or thoroughly controlled because he wanted out? whether it was the fact that he was being disciplined by Mayock, he didn't respect Mike in a certain way, clearly, uh, or he didn't like the offense, the quarterback, the coach. I mean, uh, what do you read into I, that? I or do you think or case. do you think or do you think it was just yeah. of some all sort things, of I hope that's not the case. It is the commitment he makes to an organization and to his teammates to orchestrate getting out of there at this point in time because he didn't like a few of the things. That would be extremely disappointing if yeah. that happened. I don't think he would have done the apologies. With, 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 with all the captains there, if he really thought he wasn't going to be there, or if he was, he was trying to orchestrate his, well, his way out. Within 24 hours after that, he Instagrammed that he released me. Right, but, but that's because yeah. they were coming well, that after was that $30 million. Dollars. You, know, you having flashbacks, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that fine was the final straw for him, right? That $215,000 fine. No, the, but you 30 know what? Million. And, the $30 million. And, the and then, yeah, the, no, that would void that. Yeah, I know, you know, again, I know hey. we've had the conversation. It just, it just boggles the mind that that, that would come as a shock. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. How does that come as a surprise? Everybody, if I had a coach... Or player, or player, you find him. But a coach mispractice, mispractice. This guy's missed a game in Pittsburgh, so you'd lose your job. But you'd but be let gone. Let me say, coach, and you tell me if I'm wrong. There, there's a lot of organizations that you hold out, and every day there's a fine schedule for the guys that hold out. Then they come back, and you go, "Don't worry, All right, about forget it. about those fines. Yeah, we're yeah. back, and, and everybody's back together. And that, that was just what we had to do. But we're not going to assess those fines. There's, there's a lot of teams." that do that and I'm not surprised if AB thought oh that's what's going to happen I'm going to apologize I'm going to come back we're going to get ready to play and they're going to wash their hands of that and all of a sudden $215,000 and we're going to mess with your guarantees and there became more of it than that okay so uh Le'Veon Bell is interestingly enough uh, on the Jets now so that means the Bell and that Bell who's going to be coming up later on with Steve Smith in an interview that took place earlier this week Bell and Brown are on opposite ends of the Jets and the Patriots rivalry that we'll see in week three but week one we got a long-standing rivalry between the Giants and the Cowboys playing out Jane Slater making her first appearance on NFL game day morning good morning to you Jane Good morning, Rich. Well, the Cowboys didn't have a lot of their key starters on offense throughout training camp because of injuries. But today, 
they get them all back just in time for week one. When you look at this Pro Bowl group of guys, guys like Zach Martin, uh, Tyron Smith, as well as Amari Cooper, they all return. Amari Cooper looking especially good in practice this week, really fluid, no lingering signs of that left muscle strain. And as for Ezekiel Elliott, well, at the end of that holdout in the new deal, we're expecting about 20 to 25 snaps from him with the rookie Tony Pollard and fullback Jamez Zalawali filling in the gaps. If that news doesn't get Michael Irvin fired up, then maybe this NFL-inspired clip will. the greatest the field ever seen in Tripoli. One, two, three. Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three Super Bowls, but what you expect, that's what winners get. That's what winners get. They all in the Hall of Fame, cause when you bought a game, give you the benefits. Ooh. Troy Aikman, if I'm open guaranteed, he find me. Sick with the timing, I ain't just rhyming. Plus he won 90 games in, in the, the 90s. 90s. Hey. Michael Irvin, call him playmaker. Looking for him, that's the number 88 player. Oh. Lining up with him, they can't save you. Run circles round you like a waist trainer. Big plays in the big games. Throw it to him, watch him ball like 88 does. And if you play like Irvin, the number on your jersey. Welcome to the 88 club. Wait, <laughs> you thought I forgot about him? The world never could, and I didn't talk about about winning, all-time leader in rushing, and I don't really see a spot slipping. The field was his victim. 18,000 yards, but it feel like 18 million. Three Cowboys that'll go down as the greatest to ever step foot in the building. The triplets. The triplets. The triplets. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. Good job, Mike. <laughs> that's nice, man. Oh, He's rapping around here. Oh, 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 Mike. Yeah, I like that. All right, I, no I like that. Now here's vintage footage of Mariucci and Steve Young set to a polka. <laughs> <laughs> next week, next week. That's next week yeah. in NFL 100. That was cool, though. Man, Irv, this is the best chance since then, right? Yeah? Yeah, yes. Yeah, Are since, we overreacting by since, saying that? Uh, no, no, we're not. No, we're not. And we're not talking about just, just we, we, look, we know the main characters, the main guys, but the depth on this team is incredible. And, Kurt, I know, I'm telling you right now, the Kellen Moore move. I was not on board with that move early on. But when I started talking to these guys on that football team, I started changing my mind. I heard Ezekiel <clears throat> Elliott and these guys talk about the input that they have a chance at now that they did not have a chance at before. He says, hey, man, nobody listened to us before. This guy will listen. I think that will carry over big. This is the best <clears throat> chance the Cowboys had to get to a Super Bowl since yours truly took them there. Yes, no, it is. No question. The most complete team that they've had. A young defense. They got ability to rush the passer. They got those linebackers. Defense is good. Good guys on the back end. Obviously, the offensive line and Zeke being back. But again, it all comes down to the quarterback position. And uh -oh. we've seen moments. No, we've seen moments. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I love Dak. I think Dak does a lot of things well. But I think he's going to have to be better this year. You see it right here. I mean, he gets out on the move, he can be a special player. Nice I mean, throw. look at that. Beautiful. Rolling to his left. Drops a dime. Watch this. You got pressure in your face. Deep comeback pressure in your face. Ball's on the money. Dak has the ability to do this stuff. We've seen it at times. Wow. I just want to see more consistency. It's what we saw in preseason. Michael, you got to make these. You got to make these layups if you're going to compete for Super Bowls. You can't miss those kinds of throws. And that's just what I've seen as he's grown up. He's missed too many of those layups. <clears throat> that, to me, is the difference. They got all the other pieces, the pass game, wide receivers, quarterback can they take it to the next level if they can coupled with everything else I think they've got a great chance to compete for a championship yeah I think this is the best chance I'm not going to crown them yet Mike I'm not okay. crowning your guys yet they've only won one playoff game together all right they haven't really been knocking at the door now if they're all healthy and all there I like them a lot I like their roster and you mentioned the defense Kurt hey, this is a great young defense it was a top 10 defense how about Leighton Van Der Esch from Boise State he's one of the great tacklers in the league and they just signed Jalen Smith to a new, speed. To a new oh speed, speed on defense That's and speed. Demarcus Lawrence I mean this bunch on defense coached by Rod Marinelli man is scary so are they a complete team Yes. Now they got to show us week in and week out and finish strong. I know. I know that there are no earthquakes there, but Irv's Cowboys playing for a Super Bowl in Miami would be a it's, seismic it's, 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 event. It's, 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 it's seismic heaven on earth event. It is absolutely heaven on earth. You're absolutely right, buddy. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yes. <laughs> I don't even need to chewed on that. In the on location, the rest mm. of the NFC East, the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of people think they are winning the division. Taking on Washington. Let's go out there. Kay Adams is out there. Not so fast. 
Michael Irvin. These Eagles fans want another Lombardi. Their sights are set on Miami in a Super Bowl as well with a loaded offense and a team that's been there and done that. We've got Swoop. We've got some of the most passionate fans in yes, the National Football yeah. League here. Out here. And they know how important it is to get a win and a fast start to this season in a divisional race with those Dallas Cowboys. Now, D'Angelo Hall, in order to do that, they're going to have to get past the Redskins here this afternoon. Can this Redskins defense stop this loaded offense with the Eagles? You know, that's the question. And can they stop them? Yes, they have a chance to stop them or slow them down. But they have to have that defensive line needs to hunt for yep. the Redskins. And ultimately, that secondary, Landon Collins, they paid a lot of money to him. John Josh Norman, they have to make plays. They have to contain Deshaun, Wa Deshaun Watson. They have to contain <laughs> Deshaun Jackson. They have to contain uh, Zach Ertz and all these other weapons that they have in that passing attack. If, 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 if the D-line can hunt, I feel confident that the secondary can contain some of these explosive weapons that the Eagles have. And Carson Wentz has been sacked 14 times in five career games in this matchup. And it's because of that defensive front that you talk about. You talk about the Bama boys, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen. You have Ryan Kerrigan also in that front. They have to be in an, in an attacking nature if they want to win this game. They want to, to help out that back end. They got to be able to get after Carson Wentz, possibly force some turnovers, and do everything that they possibly can to slow this Philadelphia Eagles off down because they're loaded guys I mean this Philadelphia Eagles offense can do anything you want if you want to run the football they have the backs if you want to put it over the top and throw the football they have Deshaun Jackson that has all of that speed that you just can't coach we've heard Carson Wentz throughout the preseason in training camp talking about how excited he is we were just on the field I ran into Howie Roseman the GM and I said in one word describe what you're feeling right now and he said excitement swoop is here swoop excited. Black out this sun, man. There and, you if, go. and if that's the word to describe this Eagles squad All right, Coach, you heard you say all offseason the team is good on paper. You've seen them prep this week. How ready are they for this opener? I think they're ready. You know, the anticipation has been building, and, uh, you know, we try not to peak too early. And, and they've, uh, they've done a good job of, of putting the time in, putting the effort in, uh, building toughness and building uh, accountability between each other. And uh, hopefully we're ready to go. All right, now we see all the explosive offensive players you guys have on your roster. Are you going to try to ignite that pretty quickly or let the flow of the game kind of dictate what you do offensively? Are you trying to ask me what the first yes. play of the game is? <laughs> uh, you know what? We're going to try to go with um, – uh, you know, we're going to try to establish some things early and then go from there. But uh, I don't know really how the flow of the game happens. It happens. I think all of our guys have bought in and understand that the most important thing is to do the best for the team and to put each other in the best situation to be successful. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck, Freddie. Right, appreciate it, Steve. All right. To another guy with Alabama ties in a way from his profession, Ian Rappaport. What's the latest on Melvin Gordon? Well, Rich, Melvin Gordon is obviously not going to be on the field today when the Chargers play the Colts. We did not know, though, when he was actually going to show up. We do now. I am told he is going to miss the first six to eight weeks, which means the Chargers may not have their star running back until late October. Now he has been fined about a million dollars. Those fines are going to continue to escalate. He got permission to seek a trade. Only one team offered. That wasn't happening. No negotiations are going on. So it does seem, Rich, that Melvin Gordon is going to show up without a new deal in the middle of the season. Until then, it's going to be Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson for the Chargers. Days. Coming up. I didn't really see myself going back, you know, and playing in that type of environment. Le'Veon Bell opens up to Steve Smith Sr. about how things went wrong in Pittsburgh and while they'll go right in New York. One, early games. What do you have, sir? Well, I'll start out with Viking star receiver Rich Stephon Diggs. He had a hamstring injury, was limited in practice. He is officially in. He is going to play very good news for the Vikings. Another big-time receiver, Robbie Anderson with the Jets. Had a calf injury that slowed him a little bit. The expectation was he was going to be active, and he is active. Obviously, very good for the Jets. More receiver news. Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, the Ravens' first-round receiver, had a foot injury, missed some time. Not only is he going to play rich, he actually may start. They love 
this young receiver. But here's a big one for a little later on. Adrian Peterson, not injured, is going to be a healthy scratch for the Washington Redskins. No doubt this is something not going to sit well with him. And one more quick thing, potentially for fantasy, Michael Badgley, the Chargers kicker, he is out. Ty Long going to kick today. All right, thanks very much. Ian Rappaport with the latest 90 minutes before kickoff to week one. That looks like Antonio Brown, I'm assuming, landing in uh, at Logan or somewhere privately in the area, meaning, does that mean Antonio Brown will be in the building tonight with the Steelers in Foxborough? <laughs> Let's put this whole thing under the players-only microscope presented by Geico. Gentlemen? <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Rich. And joining us from Philly, we got Michael Robinson, D'Angelo Hall. What's up, fellas? Y'all look like the Blues Brothers out there. You're dressed alike. <laughs> I'm just Go ahead on, Kirk. Go ahead on. It's, all right. it's so hot. We had to lose the jackets, man. It's too hot out here. So what we do in Players Only is we go inside the locker room. So we're going to keep talking about this A.B. story and going into the locker room in New England. What, what is that going to mean to the dynamic out there? Yeah, I mean, with with Antonio Brown walking into this into that locker room, you just know that Antonio Brown respects greatness. He respects God. He's, he respects people that are great at the sport. He's already um, said that uh, Tom Brady is a goat. You know what I mean? And, and to me, it's, it has to be that type of personality to get um, Antonio Brown focused on winning the championship. I had a guy by the name of Percy Harvin walking to my Seattle Seahawks locker room, and there were times there were some ups and downs with Percy. But there were times where, as a leader, I had to go into Percy and say, hey, look, man, what's going on? And get to know the guy. And once you get to know the guy and know what makes him tick, that's, a, that's how you can know how to become his teammate, a true teammate. And that's how we knew how to challenge Percy so that we can go and do what we do, win a Super Bowl. He ended up returning a kick for a touchdown in the Super Bowl. So, D, what are some of the things that you had to deal with with, with personalities like Antonio Brown walking into a locker room? Yeah, I mean, when I was in, uh, when I was a member of the Washington Redskins, we had a guy by the name of Albert Haynes. Oh. We paid him a whole lot of money to go out there and do something, right? Go play. Go be a – at the time, it was a three technique. He he felt like he didn't want to be a three technique because we changed defenses. And so, you know, I had to basically lean on him and say, hey, look, this is what the team needs for you to be – for us to be successful. And so it, it has to come a point in Antonio Brown's career where it becomes more about the team. I think you're absolutely right. When when he walks into a locker room with, with, with a group of guys that he respects, ultimately a guy like Tom Brown, Brady. Julian Edelman's done a lot in this league. Bill Belichick is the catalyst. And everybody from the top down follows those commandments. And so I absolutely think that Antonio Brown will fit in perfect in that locker room with those guys. Yeah, guys, I, I, I do too. I just think that it, we, we don't understand how much guys do respect winning. Most that's mostly that's what guys want to do. They want to win. And, and 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 they'll respect that in that locker room now. You know, you guys are talking about Percy Harvin and, and Albert Hayward. That's nothing. I had to deal with Charles Haley. That was nothing what you guys were dealing with. Charles Haley came in and man, Chucky would mess with anybody and everybody in the locker room and that was all cool. I remember one time he started getting in on, on our strength coach. And, and the strength coach was, was, was my guy, he was my right hand guy, and, and I said, Chucky, you're going to stop right now, or we are going to have a problem. And you know what, later on, when, I, when, when he did stop, and later on he came back to me, he said, Michael, you were right. He said, you were right, man. He said, I shouldn't have gotten no coach like that. I was just messing with him, I know he took it wrong, but you were right, and I appreciate you saying that. We, and, and it was great. It was great ever since then because he respected the situation when he came in that locker room. And, and I think that's exactly what A.B. will do in New England. And I think we ought to know, all of us that have been in the locker room, the locker room's a different place. The guys come from different places. They have different interests. There's a lot of things that are going on outside the locker room. The real key becomes, what are you inside the locker room? Yeah, how do you deal with other players? How much of the stuff do you bring into the locker room? And I said it earlier in the show. When you talk to people that have been around A.B., they genuinely like the person that is A.B. When you talk to people that have been on the field or go out to work with A.B., he works as hard as anybody at his craft, at being great at what he does. And when he shows up on Sundays, he wants to be great. I, I believe all of that, coupled with the stuff you guys are talking about, the greatness that's there, the culture that's there, guys like Tom Brady and Julian Edelman, I believe this is going to work perfectly. As long as all that stuff, you know, the Instagram and all, 
doesn't carry over to the locker room where it starts affecting what the culture is in New England. And I don't think it will. I think yeah, it's going to work neither. out just, just fine. One of the things that you all have heard him say a lot lately, Antonio Brown, is like, I don't need this. I don't need this. You know, I'm set. I'm set. But he does need a ring because he doesn't have that. <laughs> right. and, and, and that what you do need may keep you in the right spot until yeah. you get it. And you can get it in New England if you are right. No and, doubt about it. Appreciate yes. you guys. Enjoy, uh, enjoy that hot weather out there in Philly. All right, men in black. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. from one guy that we talk about his personality in the locker room to another guy we might talk about his personality in the locker room, OBJ, making his debut with the Cleveland Browns today. Y'all ain't going to just be getting Man, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm just letting y'all know. Y'all ain't